All right, Chad, welcome aboard the team, man. It's good to have you. All right. You know, jam this weekend, but, uh, you know, I forgot to, there's a little something that we like out of our riders, and we like them to be kind of clean shaven, you know, we like to have them, you know, uh, spiffy haircuts, you know, a little short, kind of more like a yeah. 90210 look. Just grab them. Oh. <laughs> Matthew's not sane. Anything that's dangerous, he's going to try to do. He just likes pushing the limit. He's, he's incredible. He really is. Insane? No. Crazy? Well, maybe a little. Pushing it? Definitely. Matt Hoffman's the guy who makes you hang onto your seat and bite your lip. The tricks are bigger, the air is higher, and the attitude is more radical than ever before. Matt is on a crusade to breathe new life back into the old sport of freestyle BMX. Matt is doing a lot for the sport, a lot. Um, you know, he's setting the pace, and whereas before everybody was into going and getting a big sponsorship, they wanted to go for that big deal, whereas Matt's done everything his own way. He's a rider setting the pace for other riders, which is very good for the sport. I fight. The letters BMX stand for Bicycle Motocross, and that's how the sport started out in the 70s, racing on a motocross-style track. By the mid-80s, bikes were big business and BMX boomed. New brand names, accessories, and clothing. There were teenage riders picking up huge sponsorship deals, but people started getting greedy, and one day the bubble burst and the sport crashed. <laughs> Since its exile to the wastelands, the freestyle side of BMX has been kept alive by an element of hardcore enthusiasts. They call themselves sprocket jockeys, guys who have set about rebuilding the sport on more solid foundations. This time, the motivation is not money, it's for the love of the sport. Here in a derelict area outside Oklahoma City in the U.S. is where the rebirth is taking place. And this is where you'll find Matthew N. Hoffman, the Condor Man. Hi, right, this is where we do all our, all our business. Here's a... Uh, Steve doing something, some accounting stuff. And then uh, this is kind of a random desk we throw all the mail and stuff on. That's my friend Billy. Here's some t-shirts. How long have you been in a wheelchair for, Billy? Oh, going on three minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> because, because Bones Hill and Chicks Dig Scars, Sprocket Jackies, Hoffman Bikes. You come in here, and uh, this is the church I go to. And it's really convenient because it's right next door to the ramp room that has all the ramps in it, so if we slam, we can get our last rides read to us. Despite Matt's far-out location, this is where the sport is in the making. And fanatical freestyle BMX riders gather here from all over to pay homage, ride the ramps, and just be a part of it all. Yeah, we got that big um, race going on at the Marriott, and they're in town for that, just come down and ride the ramp and hang out and stuff like that. So it's gonna be pretty crazy this weekend. A lot of people coming in. They're like the all around riders, which means they race, they um, they ride the mini ramps, they do freestyle, they do street riding, every, everything, man, they just do it all. This week, the ramp room is extra busy because all the top guys are in town for the big dirt jumping event of the year. The rider who can pull the best trick off the dirt ramp walks away with the title of the King of Dirt. All the top guys are here, that is uh, apart from one. And uh, Matt's on his way to pick him up uh, right now, very soon anyway. There he is, that's the one he's picking up. What's up, Hey, yeah, um, hey, you need some you. help here? <laughs> Haro, GT, Hoffman Bikes, all those companies. <laughs> I hate them all. <laughs> Are you going to do the jumping contest? Yeah. 
Dennis McCoy is the overall freestyle world champion, which means he's mastered it all. Flatland, ramp, street, you name it, Dennis can do it. Flatland, just whatever you can think up on flat ground, using your pegs, your brakes, rolling around, spinning, you know, involves a lot of different type of tricks. Then there's mini ramps, which is like a smaller version of the vert ramp, mostly for lip tricks. Sometimes if they're steep enough, you can do airs on those, but mini ramps can also involve spine ramps, back-to-back -back ramps, hip ramps, whole wide assortment of stuff. And then there's vert riding, which is the half pipes and quarter pipes where you do big airs and hopefully don't crash and slam too hard. So that's the daredevil part of the sport is the vert riding. <laughs> Mention the word daredevil and Matt Hoffman's right there on cue. When it comes to the vert ramp, nobody goes higher or bigger than Matt. He's doing tricks on the ramp that at one time people would have thought impossible. That's great. He's weird. He's goofy. I mean, what can you say? He's a nut. There's no limits at all. Just whatever he wants to do, he does. He's pushing it, you know, because not that many people ride to their, their fullest ability, and he's showing that so many people can go further with their ability. And, you know, that's what I look up to him for. Yeah! Yeah! Ramp, it's, it's a more, lot more aggressive, you know, and um, it's, it's more of a mental game, you know, because anybody can do what I do. It's not like I have a special body that, that does this stuff. Actually, I mean, if I could use someone else's body, I probably could do a lot more stuff, you know, because it's, um, because they, I mean, probably in better shape than mine, you know, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's just this part that kind of, they, they get you through with that, with ramps and stuff. I think a good way to explain it is whenever you're riding, you can't talk to fear, you, you can't see fear, you know, otherwise you're going to, you're going to kind of compromise on some of your actions and the, which could make you screw up and get hurt. So when the riders are up on top of the ramp, they have no fear. You're focused and you're not thinking about fear, you know. So your bike, after a while, becomes just an extension of your body. But it's a really cool thing to be able to just block out all fear and just, um, and just do work off your feelings. And it's just kind of a pure soul thing, you know. You're just working off what your soul is telling you, you know. Matt's riding has become so spectacular that nowadays he takes the show on the road to spread the word. Uh, we travel around doing shows and stuff with it. And uh, that's, basically, that's basically it. We just go to different fairs and try to recruit kids and start riding, you know. <laughs> This is where I always ride. This is the place. So we're creaking. Yeah, we had to raise the um, ceiling, you know? And so, uh, so it's not real sturdy, I guess. And whenever, <laughs> whenever the wind blows, it creaks. And it... When he's home, Matt's like a crazy scientist in his laboratory, always trying to put new and radical theories to the test. Instead of working in the limits, working with the limits, you know, that's that's kind of the, the fun part of it. Not having any rules and just trying to trying to you know, give that little extra. You know, when you're when you're pushing the limits and stuff, of course you're gonna you're gonna mess up sometimes and you're gonna have to do the trial and error thing, you know, and you just gonna have to learn. I'm in it for the long run and I, I wanna experience all the pleasure that this has to give me, you know, so um, I'm of course gonna gonna accept all the pain that's gonna come along with it. This is the, the healing couch, we call it, because every time we slam, we just, we run back here and just sit here for a while, and it seems to, seems to make the pain go away a little quicker. So lots of pain trapped in this little mattress right here. Somehow it sucks the pain out of you. You've got a direct line with your doctor here. What's that? Have you got a direct telephone line with your doctor? <laughs> oh, no. This is most disturbing. 
Matthew Hoffman's not the only one who likes to experiment a little. That's one rider who could never be accused of not going for his tricks, which means that when it does go wrong, he slams hard. When you get to this level in the sport, slamming becomes as much a part of it as pulling off the trick. And so by now, Matt knows as much about pain and injuries as he does about backflips. Okay, Matt, tell us about this place. Where are we? Um, this is at uh, my mechanic shop. <laughs> it's kind of body mechanics. I have to go put myself in the shop every once in a while. And this is the guy that fixes me all up. Cracked tibia, crank stab leg, countless concussions, six broken ankles. I broke my wrist, 10 screws and a plate put in my ankle. I reconstructed shoulder surgery. So I'm doing therapy right now, just trying to get my shoulder all fixed up and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Your name? Uh, Matt Hoffman. Describe Matt as an absolute orthopedic surgeon's dream and a father's nightmare. Three broken toes. I had orthopedic knee surgery. And then I had a bruised kidney. I broke my jaw disc one time. <laughs> and I keep putting him back together as long as he wants to keep riding. It's not something I enjoy. Four fractured teeth. A tumor removed from my leg. A lot of stitches. I got hit by a car four times. Uh, if Matt was my son, I'd have a different opinion, most likely. Lose bone fragments in my left elbow. I stubbed my peaky toe once, and I broke both my thumbs. And broken foot metacarpals. We also hope that by the time he reaches the ripe old age of 30, he can get out of bed in the morning. I strained my eyes reading in the dark. Three broken collarbones. I got amnesia, I think. <laughs> Two broken ribs. That's about it. Me and Dennis were just kind of um, slowly working our way into um, knowing what pain is like now, so that when we're older, we'll be used to it and everything will be okay, you know? If I can borrow it, we don't even need to watch it so we can get going. Just chow and then. Okay. I mean, you're sure it's it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. With Matt laid up and temporarily out of action, it's up to Dennis to give the ramp room its regular workout. I first got known for flatland riding. I've always ridden street, I've always jumped, you know, vert ridden forever too, which has kind of taken off a lot lately, the vert riding and street riding. So I just try to do a little everything, keeps you from getting burnt out. You know, you'll never quit if you do it all, because if you get bored with one, you just go do the other for a while. High five! You know, vert riding just requires, you know, a daredevil type attitude. You know, you just got to have guts to go for the tricks, basically. A lot of the stuff on vert, even though it looks crazy, is a lot more basic than some of the flatland stuff that could take, you know, months just to pull a trick the first time and, you know, twice that long in order to get it dialed. Or if you may never even get it dialed, there's people doing crazy tricks that they pulled maybe 
you know, three or four times in their life. So the flatlands are really advanced stuff, but at the same time, there's really a whole lot of, not a lot of danger involved in flatlands. What do you got here, Chuck? We got our sound system. It's what we listen to when we ride. It's what we use. What kind of music you into? Oh, country music. <laughs> no, uh, rap and hardcore, stuff like that. Is it easy when you got some tunes going? Get some tunes? Oh, yeah, you get psyched when you're listening to stuff that you like to listen to. So, just get y'all hyped up. Ready to go out and try killing yourself. With the King of Dirt competition now only a few hours away, the riders start to get tuned in with their machines. Well, dirt jumping, just like any type of bike riding, is basically about just having fun. But it's kind of a cross between ramp and freestyle riding. And just go up, you've got your own style, trying to pull as many tricks as you can, get them really extended, and pull it really smooth. Dirt jumping in itself is a riding aspect all of its own. It's a little bit different from every other type of riding. It's just one of those things you got to go out there and try to learn everything just like any other type of sport there. Myself, I'm doing maybe three or four tricks to a bar hop, like a nothing to a bar hop, to a nothing can-can, to a no-footer. So it's getting pretty technical now, too. Normally, dirt jumping takes place in the big outdoors, but the King of Dirt is an indoor event, allowing the spectators a good look at the action. By now, the guys have got the takeoff ramp into shape, and the practice jumps are underway. This is most disturbing. Some people are into BMX, and some aren't. Welcome to Hoffman Enterprises. This is where I transform from a rider to an evil corporate head. Gotta do what you gotta do. With Matt spending so much time on the healing couch, there's plenty of time for him to concentrate on building and marketing his own bikes. I mean, we haven't broken one of our bikes and we've been riding them for a year now, you know, and, we, and I used to break other companies' bikes for like, uh, I mean, I've broken three in a day before, you know. You gotta have something you have confidence in. If you're when you're like 50 feet in the air, you know, coming down, your bri your bike breaks, you know, you're screwed. So you just got you gotta have um, you gotta have confidence in your bike doing what you do. So. Only on high five. Yep, you did hear him right. He did say 50 feet in the air. One of Matt's experimental constructions is a 25 foot ramp. He gets 25 foot of air at the top, which puts him a total of 50 feet off the ground. It's feats of daring like this which make Matt a legend amongst the other riders. People love to just sit around and listen to stories of Matt Hoffman pushing back the limits of the sport. <laughs> we have, we have uh, 
We have um, big ramp, kind of, oh, we have large, medium, and small. <laughs> <laughs> I live for the day. That's that's you know I don't I don't put limits in front of me. You know if I want to do something I do it because you know I don't want to regret it. You know I'm gonna do what I want to do. Only on high five. It's showtime. A blitzing evening of BMX action is scheduled for Oklahoma City's Meridian Center. The crowds have come under the pretext of watching the Grand Nationals race action. But the real fascination is with the side of the sport which is getting radical. The Grand Finale, the King of Dirt. The pros are the main show. We have, you know, really cool prizes for the pros, but then that's kind of the side attraction. And actually, it's, they probably like, the crowd likes the you know, King of Dirt, the jumping better than the pros, I think, you know. Because they want to see somebody, you know, fight. People can evil syndrome, they want to see blood, you know. They want to see somebody try killing themselves and, you know, it's getting rad. There's expected to be a showdown between the champion, Dennis McCoy, and Dirt Jumping's newest star, Chad Harrington. I pulled, I scratched, man. Let it to work. All that remains is to get a few rules sorted out, and then we're ready to go. This is pulling it. Matt's not jumping, but he gets the honor of casting the judges' vote. pulls a great backflip and lands it without a problem. The crowd just lap it up. Now the pressure's on Chad. He makes a no-footer seat grab, which puts him back into the lead, and now he just has to wait. Is that it? Jody lands his first ever backflip attempt. It gives him a buzz, but not the lead. The final jumper to go is Dennis McCoy. Yeah, Dennis makes a no-footer backflip, and we're talking radical air. To pull off this jump on the night is a definite competition winner. Dennis, that's pretty rad. He's gonna get first, he deserves it. <laughs> that's rad, man. <laughs> on sight, because it's something that'll be on TV, man. That's what sights mean. You see the full on, you know, TV quality cameras. Cool. <laughs> after Dennis did the backflip, I wanted to just go up there and just do a one hand or something. I didn't know what to do after Two he did that. Two people did backflips and I quit. <laughs> I know you're still the ruler. Put the big two hat on there. That's rad, man. Here we go, man. BMX will never die. If if every major bike company dropped their team, if every magazine stopped making magazines, if every contest ceased to exist, I'll still have my ramp in my backyard, you know? My friends will still have their ramps. We'll still all go street riding on the weekends. So, you know, it, it could die in the public eye, but it's never gonna actually die. <laughs>